Good morning, students. Today's lecture is on the topic Hello Alkane and Hello Erenes. Basic things that we need to discuss on Hello Alkanes and Hello Erenes are their classification, general preparation of Hello Alkanes and Hello Erenes, general properties, and uh, some specific case study on different type of polyhalogen compounds. To begin with, let us first start the different classifications of haloalkane and haloalane. The first thing that we may classify different haloalkanes and haloalanes on the basis of their number of halogen atom present. If it is only one halogen atom, then we say it's a monosubstituted halogen product. For a two halogen atom being the same compound, it is dihalo product and so on. Let us take an example. Methyl chloride and dihydrogen in that case, one to dihydro derivative. We will say it is a dihydro derivative and this is a monohydro derivative. On the basis of type of hybridization on the C atom, we can further classify the haloalkane and haloalanes into different categories. In one category, we classify them as being sp3 hybridized C atom and in the second case, sp2 hybridized C atom. This is sp3 hybrid cut. Similarly, for the allylic derivative, allylic radical is obtained from removal of one H atom from propene, where the H atom removed is from the sp3 hybrid cut. This hydrogen, if it be that removed, then we will have the allylic radical, then it will be. This, this carbon is also sp3 hybridized. This allylic radical can also be presented in a cyclical form, in cyclo-derivative. This one is sp3 hybrid carbon. So in that way, the distinguish between the allylic and allylic halide Though both of them is of an sp3 hybrid carbon can be manifested on the uh, pattern of the radical being present. This is allylic radical, and here we are. This is alkylic radical, and here we are of an allylic radical. Now let us focus on uh, the carbon atom which is uh, sp2 hybridized, and they are producing haloalkanes. First is vinyl radical. Vinyl radical. One hydrogen when removed, it produces the vinyl radical. This carbon atom is sp2 hybrid. If we put X for there, so it is vinyl chloride in which the carbon atom is sp2 hybridized. Again, we can have this format also in the cyclical form. This is also a phenylic derivative. Our next topic is to discuss on the nature of CX bond. In alkyl halides, we are forming this bond as a polar bond. It is very imperative as the halogen atom is highly electronegative, then there will be delta negative charge and delta positive charge on the C atom, delta negative charge on the X atom, resulting that CX bond to be polar. But surprisingly, it appears that uh, the haloalkanes, though they are expected to be soluble in water, 
they are actually not. The reason behind their insolubility in water is that the hydrophobic nature of this alkyl group. So it is uh, very much common now that if the alkyl group is bulky one, then it will become much more less soluble than the smaller shroud of uh, size of the alkyl group. General preparation. General preparations of alkyl halides and aryl halides to begin with. Alkyl halides are generally prepared by substitution nucleophilic reactions, which is uh, precisely known as SN type of reaction. SN. It stands for substitution nucleophilic or nucleophilic substitution reaction. Before proceeding further on the different types of preparation of haloalkanes and haloalkanes, let us first uh, recap somewhat uh, on the different types of nucleophiles uh, categories and how the nucleophilicity is actually uh, measured. A nucleophile is one which carries a negative charge with them. If we compare a base, uh, that's a Lewis base, with a nucleophile, then you will see that a base also carries a negative charge with them. So basically, a nucleophile and a base, these two species are having a certain concentration of the negative charge upon them, but they are not absolutely the same in all cases. A base donates its negative charge on a proton, whereas a nucleophile donates its negative charge on a carbon atom, which is of having some more deficiency in electron cloud. This is the basic difference. Now, a nucleophile strength, that means the nucleophilicity, it depends on several factors, which cannot be actually categorized in certain periodical formats, but though we can elaborate some extent that how does the nucleophilicity depends on the different factors. An atom which is polarizable is a good nucleophile. Let us take an example. For group 70, X negative atom, F, Cl, Pr, and I. This is the maximum size. So it's maximum polarizable. And that's how the reason this is better nucleophile than the previous one. So in that sort of case, we can have a conclusion the down the group nucleophilicity increases. In a certain consequence of uh, nucleophilicity, we can also observe that nucleophilicity decreases along the period. But this general trend may or may not hold good in certain cases. So where a nucleophile substitute another nucleophile is said to be a nucleophilic substitution type of reaction. Haloalkanes, they can be prepared from an alcohol, aliphatic alcohol. This reagent, this Lucas reagent, in that case, OH is actually, OH negative is actually substituted by X negative. In this reaction, one nucleophile is, a subs, is getting substituted by another nucleophile. So we can say it's the SN type of reaction. But what is the utility of this catalyst? As we were discussing related to the nucleophilicity aspect, then we have found good nucleophile and a poor nucleophile. General trend is a good nucleophile is always a good living group. That means if OH negative lives from that side, then X will immediately take the position 
resulted easy formation of our product. In that case, OH negative is not a good nucleophile. So we need to enhance its leaving capacity which is actually done by ZnCl2 and that's what the reason this catalyst is used over here. In that case, again, it's a type of nucleophilic substitution. But it is somewhat different from this one. Here, the nucleophile is uh, supplied internally. So we say this type of reaction is SNI type of reaction. There is not, that is not only the difference with this one. You will uh, discuss uh, this geochemical aspect in the later half of our lecture. Then we find this reaction shows an absolute retention of its stereochemical aspect. This is also a type of internal case, but there is absolute reversal of the stereochemical aspect. What we find here is the retention, there we find the inversion. This type of aspects are known as stereochemical aspects that we learn in our stereochemistry section. Now out of these three, this process is technically far more, far more important than this to why. In this reaction, the compound that we are getting as our product is in its purest form. Why? The byproduct we are forming SO2 and hydrogen chloride gas which escapes out from the reaction vessel leading to the pure formation of our desired product. Now general preparation of some aromatic alkyl. This is sodium nitride, HCl in a certain specific temperature condition, 0 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius. We have the production of diazonium salt. This diazonium salt on further treatment with Cu2, Cl2, HCl, we get chlorobenzene. Identically, we can form. Cu2 Br2 slash HBr to produce bromobenzene. This reaction is also known as Sandia reaction. So one of those important name reaction that is frequently asked in your board exam. But no write notes on Sandia reaction. You have to start right from there to finish up to here. Now we have specified here the production of certain haloarenes. But this Sandia reaction is not limited to the formation of halogens only. We can have cyanobenzene, that's benzene nitride, uh, in the same fashion. In that case, we will start with Cu2Cn2 slash HCl. You will get a cyanobenzene over here. If we add potassium iodide and heat, then you will get iodobenzene. But make a note of that. This reaction is not included in Sandia reaction. HBF4 will get fluorobenzene. This reaction is known as Balch-Zeeman reaction. So, the preparation of this all haloarenes can be done with the help of this NPCL and subsequently production of uh, different types of haloarenes. Apart from that, let us discuss of uh, another process of preparation of the haloalkane by free radical halogenation mechanism. Free radical halogenation 
is a photochemical reaction. In that case, free radicals are produced in presence of the ultraviolet rays, HNO, which is photosensitive reactions. Methane, let us take the most simplest case first. Methane. In that case, one hydrogen is uh, substituted by one Cl by the process of free radical halogenation as you have already learned in your class 11. That is the monohalo substituted product. This reaction does not stop over here. As we are having further removable hydrogen atom, then it goes on displacement resulting in the formation of dihalo, trihalo and so on as far as we are having the number of hydrogen atoms available for substitution. Here you see, one hydrogen is removed by one Cl atom in each steps, leading to the formation of tetrahedral derivatives. The final, we don't left with any irreplaceable hydrogen further. So only one monohalo product, one dihalo product, one trihalo and one tetrahedral product is possible by the photochemical halogenation of methane. You have to find out the environment of hydrogen in order to distinguish the type of hydrogen present leading to the different types of substituted, halo substituted product. Let us uh, further elaborate this case. If you are having propane, in that case, if you focus on this hydrogen, three hydrogen, and mark it as A. It is of having one, one hydrogen if you consider over here. The environment of this hydrogen is two hydrogen followed by ethyl radical. Similarly, if you focus on that hydrogen, one hydrogen, the environment is with two more hydrogen and one ethyl radical. That means categorically these three hydrogens are in the same environment as those of these three hydrogens. So mark them as A. Now let us focus on these two hydrogens. They are absolutely different from the environment of these two. How? One hydrogen, if you consider, is of having another hydrogen and both sides being occupied by methyl radical. That means you can categorize it's a separate category as B. Now, the photochemical halogenation, if you proceed with this, you will get one monohalo substituted because here of having only one type of A and then there is another possibility of substitution this monohalo. So from one A and another from B. So you get two monohalo substituted product and what they Cl CH2. CH2, CH3 plus CH3, CH, Cl, CH3. You can write Cl replacing this hydrogen also because they are equivalent. So if the question asks you from propane, how many monohalo substituted haloalkanes can be obtained? So the answer is 2 over A. First, we have to identify the environment of the different types of hydrogen and accordingly you can conclude. If you are asked to dry, dry halo derivatives, then you see two hydrogen can be removed from here, two hydrogen also can be removed from there. That means again we are having two di halo substituted products. Identically, if you are asked how many tri halo substituted products can be obtained from propane, so your answer will be 
only one that is CCL3 CH2 CH3 the reason being very simple in case of D type 5 genes there is no such 3 hydrogen cumulatively present over there don't forget it is not possible to halogenate in that way one from here one from there and another from there as the mechanism suggests the replaceable hydrogen for dihalo, trihalo, or that is polyhalo derivatives in that way should be removed from that certain carbon from where we are actually starting the re replacement of the hydrogen atom. This type of questions can further be liberated with a certain another specific example. Let us try it. Again, in the same conclusion and explanation, 
you can formulate that C and B positions are not available for a trihalo derivative substitution. So only A position and B positions, positions are available. In that case, you will say only two types of trihalo derivatives are present. So this is all about different types. You can further formulate other isomers like normal pentane, uh, and then from there you can easily conclude how many such type of uh, replaceable hydrogen are possible and different types of halo-derivatives that can be formulated. Substrate 
हैंड न्यूक्लियर फॉर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज काउंटेबल दैट मीन्स ऑन द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ दिस एंड ऑल्सो ऑन द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ दिस सब्सट्रेट द ऑर्डर एक्चुअली डिपेंड्स एंड दैट इज वाई इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज एस एन टू टाइप ऑफ रिएक्शन अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस दैट इज द जेनरल डेफिनेशन लेट एस एनालाइज ऑन द डिफरेंट फैक्टर्स ऑन विच द रेट ऑफ दिस रिएक्शन एक्चुअली डिपेंड्स पॉइंट नंबर वन इट इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द सबस्ट्रेट This is one of this condition. Second is concentration of incoming nucleophile. Third is concentration of outgoing nucleophile. Instead of concentration, we can say the nature, nature of. Uh, incoming nucleophile and uh, nature of outgoing nucleophile and four point is on nature of solvent that we are using in the first case see sn1 reaction the mechanism if we start there we find इन्वर्जन 
and this one has retention. Vertical inversion and this one is the retention. And this is probable, this probability tells only when we are having this one in the plane because you can attack right from the front or from the back because this one has to hybridize carbon atom is aligned absolutely on a plane just like a palm. For, for that reason, the nucleophile can come from that side and also from this side, resulting in the formation of these two things. But here is a big, big important thing is what? That it is vertical inversion and that is retention. That means the optical activity of this is absolutely in reversal order of that. So if we mix one ratio one of this component, that is going to be giving optical neutrality. And that type of mixture is also known as a racemic mixture. That is, the racemization is observed when guessing one type of reaction actually occur. Now from the discussion, what we have we can conclude is that the stability of this part is under main perspective for going forward of this type of uh, stereochemical aspect. Now when form, this type of carbocation that is an intermediate species is very much stabilized. If A, B, C, these are alkyl group, then that can be made very much stable by hyperconjugation effect. And that means a 3 degree carbonium ion which is maximum stable then 2 degree, then 1 degree. That means the order of SN1 reaction to be followed is from 3 to 2, then to 1. So here we have the first point being elaborated the structure of the substrate. That means a carbocation which is of having a stable geometry will definitely have a tendency to follow SN1 pathway. Now let us find what is there if it uh, does not have that type of uh, alkyl substitution and does not follow SN1. Then where it will fall? Therefore, 
you will have for the concentration of nucleophile that means greater the concentration of the nucleophile more will be the essential type of new reaction now concentration of the outgoing nucleophile in that case better living group will influence both sn1 and sn2 equally and uh, the reaction will be definitely influenced on the nature of the solvent a polar protic solvent now what is a polar protic solvent a solvent which produces a proton on dissociation that means hydrogen that is which is replaceable hydrogen if it be bonded with o or n such sort of electronegative atom then you will say they are polar protic solvent let us take some example H2O and alcohol they are all polar protic solvent but if that replaceable hydrogen atom is not bonded through such electronegative atom they become polar aprotic solvent just like uh, Acetone, diamethylformamide, they are polar but aprotic solvent. Now, it's a polar aprotic solvent. What we have is that this reactive intermediate, that means uh, that carbocation, it is solvolized, and therefore the reaction rate is increased. But in case of SN2, it solvolizes both. It solvolizes both the part of uh, uh, reactive intermediates and also the incoming nucleophile resulting to the slowing down of the species. But polar aprotic, it will definitely stabilize the reactive intermediates but will not influence uh, that uh, stability of incoming nucleophile. So it will enhance the SN2 reactions again. So dear students, today we have discussed on certain generalized uh, perspective on the reactions of aliphatic uh, um, al 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 alkyl halides and uh, their general preparations and hope uh, this lectures will definitely be somewhat helpful for your further preparation. Thank you.